of unprecedented anxiety amongst the Jewish community in this country. A significant majority increasingly worry about their safety and security here. They question whether their children and grandchildren have a future in the country that they love. Yes, this is partially as a result of a record number of anti-Semitic incidents as reported by the CST. It's also because of the eternal threat from the far right and fundamentalist terrorism, which means Jewish schools require permanent security guards and security fences. But, Mr Speaker, it's mainly provoked by the fear that the Leader of the Opposition could become Prime Minister of this country. This is distressing for the community, but it's heartbreaking for those of us whose lives and life chances have been shaped by both our Jewish and Labour identities. How the Labour Party, the, Labour, the party which has always had anti-racism as a core value, has got itself into this position is both tragic and extraordinary. I want to devote my contribution to this today. The current leadership has enabled this by associating for decades with people whose hatred for capitalism has included false assertions about the alleged malign influence of powerful Jews. The problem is not only their association with such people, but their refusal to condemn them and call out their anti-Semitism. Some of those people previously involved on the fringes of mainstream politics, now members of the Labour Party. Then there's the leadership's long-standing support for the hard left's demonisation of Zionism. Their global strategy to equate Zionism with racism, to bastardise the word Zionism. In their worldview, the West is the problem, especially the US, and Israel is a proxy of the US in the Middle East where they don't belong. In reality, Zionism is the Jewish people's right to self-determination in their own state. It's not expansionism, aggression or the policies of any particular Israeli government. Many Zionists, including myself, oppose settlement expansion and hope at some stage in the future there will be leaders on all sides with the authority and the credibility to create the conditions for a two-state solution. The problem is that the current Labour leadership have always believed that the creation of Israel was a catastrophe and whatever their protestations favour a one-state solution, Palestine, not Israel. This is in stark contrast to their campaigning for the rights of minorities around the world to self-determination. So in their worldview, Jews are the only minority who do not have that right to self-determination. Israel is singled out and demonised when human rights abuses and lack of democracy in many other countries are on a much greater scale, including countries deified by the hard left. Jewish people are held responsible, individually and collectively, for alleged actions of the Israeli government. After a summer when the Labour Party was engulfed in a perfect storm as a result of their refusal to accept the internationally agreed definition of anti-Semitism, what was the reaction of the party leader? To go to a meeting of the party's national executive with his own proposed amendment that people should have the right to say that the creation and the existence of the State of Israel is a racist endeavour. In other words, based on this definition, the leader of the Labour Party supports people's right to be anti-Semitic. This, Mr Speaker, is extraordinary. And then there's the long-term support for terrorist organisations who kill and incite the murder of Jews, Hamas and Hezbollah. Of course there is a perfectly respectable argument for talking to terrorist groups in order to persuade them to end violence and become part of political and peace processes. But neither with Hamas Hezbollah or the IRA was this the objective of the leader of the opposition. His interactions were clearly to show solidarity with their cause and hence legitimise their use of violence in the pursuit of their goals. That is the hard truth. Because of this, how can Labour under his leadership tackle the cancer of anti-Semitism when many of the accusations refer to people who articulate views he shares? And their loyalty to the leader takes precedence over the party's anti-racist values. Why should this matter to the vast majority of UK Jews? Quite simply this. Israel is our best, maybe only, safe haven, haven against the persecution Jews have suffered in every generation through history. Most recently, the pogroms of Russia in the late 19th and early 20th century. And the horrors of the Holocaust only 80 years ago. Jews' fear of persecution is not based on historical and contemporary facts, not 
irrationality or paranoia. It's based on those historical and contemporary facts. And even in France, we've seen civilised France in the last 20 years, tens of thousands of Jews in our neighbouring EU country leave France because of their direct experiences of anti-Semitism. Mr Speaker, I salute my former colleagues who have stood so shoulder to shoulder with the Jewish community, but it has made me sick to the stomach to observe the silence of some in the party, and in other cases their denial of the problem, or attempts to smear those who have spoken out. The abuse and threats meted out, meted out to my courageous honourable friend, the member for Liverpool Wavertree, have disgusted most decent people. Instead of empathy and support, the response, the response of the hard left was to call a vote of no confidence in her. And they call themselves socialists. Quite simply, if all of this has happened in the party, imagine what would happen in our country if the right honourable gentleman ever became Prime Minister. That is why UK Jews are afraid and why I urge my friends and former colleagues to examine their consciences and act to put an end to this shameful chapter in the Labour Party's history. Anti-Semitism is not some second-class form of racism. A party rooted in the values of equality and anti-discrimination cannot collude with racism as a price worth paying for chasing an election victory.